But then on the day-to-day -day aspect, the F&B industry, uh, uh, you know, in all countries, struggle with uh, um, a high turnover rate. So the people who are serving the food or cooking the food or working in that industry, uh, there tends to be a high turnover rate. Uh, that means you know you have to consistently hire, you have to consistently train, and then after a short period of time, a lot of the people leave, and then you you are stuck in that cycle. So um, if you want to factor in the costs of hiring, uh, firing, training. Uh, gaps and errors that happen there, uh, that will add up uh, in terms of the costs uh, of that. So the cost of a machine to do so might not, you know, um, might not be that far uh, away necessarily, but still it's definitely expensive uh, to, to, to set up, especially when uh, there's also another thing to factor in the life cycle of certain restaurants is anywhere between one to three years until they really find their footing. So if they end up closing in a year or two, they won't be able to make back the money that they paid for for the machines. But if they're in there for the long term for seven, eight, nine years, uh, mm -hmm. then uh, then it's better. Now I think somewhere in the middle. So company, you know, restaurants like uh, McDonald's and Burger King, and um, the 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 quick service types of uh, restaurants, they've automated a lot of this. So they have automated timers and automated heating and so on. So the operators are doing basic functions as in lifting a lid, closing a lid, adding an element, removing an element. So they have a lot of that already automated for, 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 for decades now. So taking that a little bit, a bit of a, mm. a bigger step um, can work and it's cost effective. So you're not getting a full robot, full, fully robotic, but it's a little bit more than what you have today. I think that would be a good balance between the two.